Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. Almost. Almost. We're yeah, last day. The penultimate top, list. The penultimate list, yes, yes. Top 20 games of all time right now. I was going to give you a top hat for this, but I save that for the 10 through 1. And then what about the 10 through 1? Two, two top hats? Oh, a top hat with a little top hat on the top Do hat? Do they make that? Like nesting dolls. I'm sure they make everything, right? <laughs> with top hats. On Etsy, I'm sure you can find it. Oh I want a hat God. wearing a hat. Four score and 20 years I ago. I actually don't. I love hats. I don't like, and this is a personal preference. If you do it, that's fine. I don't like the mini hat trend. What the heck There's is a, a mini, mini hat, hat trend? trend? No, like the people have like a little top hat like on the back of their head. I'm this is sorry, a trend? A I feel thing, like I'm though. completely out of touch. Well, no. you've seen it, right? The steampunk thing where they have like a little hat. It's oh. the steampunk I, I How does it stay on? Well, like usually with some sort of band or oh, whatever. Oh, okay. It's fine, Talking but it's not about. a hat then at that point. It's just no. a decoration. Yeah. Hat's supposed to keep the... Right. A hat, well, hat, a hat has a practical purpose. The mini hat's an accoutrement. Yes. Everyone makes like fun of my hats, word. but like these have been word. really handy in Florida when Third it rains all the time. Third favorite French yeah. word. Is it your favorite? Third favorite. Third favorite. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, number two, croissant. No. Rendezvous. <laughs> Rendezvous. Okay. Well. Well, 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 well. We're here. And my number one I can't mention in, in <laughs> polite company. Uh huh. We're going to start out by saying thank you to some of our Let's Kickstarter do backers. It. I hope it's gross thank man again. The First people. one is Nathan Fillion, who also clarified not the actor, but second best. Okay. Wait, my man's name is really Nathan Fillion? I've, seen him, name. I've seen him in chat. A I'm going to disagree times. with you, Nathan. Where you say not the actor but second best, we'll say you are best because you support Dice Tower. I'll just say I don't see uh, yeah, Nathan the Firefly guy doing anything for us. That's true. That's fair. Yeah. That's right. awesome. Like that, I wonder if that's a curse or a blessing being right. named Nathan Fillion. I know because it's a very unique name yeah, as yeah. well. Wow. Right? Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, thank you to the heirs, Sean, Tanya, and Ethan, to Jeffrey Garoff. <laughs> That's always funny that he gave me the pronunciation for Groff. He's like, it's pronounced like Gur. Gur said it off. It's like turning off a light switch. He didn't want, he didn't want you to do the giraffe thing. Joel Erdst Erd Psych Claudum Grizzly Bean. Grizzly Bean! How do you, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> I'm the best there is in what I do, bub. And what I do is make various stews. Corlu. <laughs> Oh, okay. Valentine Milenkov mm -hmm. and Angela Fortunato. Fortunato. I know who Fortunato. that is. Oh, Angela. Hi, Angela. And Cora Lulu also. But, but, hi. <laughs> also, Bean Stew. What was his name? I forgot already. Uh, oh, Grizzly Bean. Bean. Grizzly, Grizzly Bean, yeah. Grizzly Bean is fire. Remember okay. Butterbean, the boxer? No, I don't know who that is. He's about 850 pounds. I've eaten butter beans and they're not yeah. that good. Yeah. What is a butter bean? It looks like a lima bean, right? Yeah, it's but another it's, it's another name for like maybe a cannelloni bean. It's or, like a white lima bean. Yeah, it's like a white bean. Okay. You know, you know they're very popular because you've never eaten one. I might have and just not known what it's called. They're usually put in that like seven bean soup. Yes, yes, yes. Which is a okay. soup for all Are the beans. Are they fairly large them. beans? Yeah. Yeah, they're like a I lima think bean. I like know. You say. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Thank you, Stephen, for the super chat. Yes. Says, Not sure I'll make it till the top ten. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, he's in Australia. Uh, oh, jeez. After were... his mega tour of of America, remember he started at the retreat. Oh, is that about who his, that is? Yeah, remember talking about his itinerary? Yeah, that was. That's crazy. how you visit America. Easy. All right, top 20, 20 through eleven, and honestly, we're at the point for me at least mm -hmm. when we get to twenty for sure. 
any of these games at any given point yeah. could be my favorite game. Yes. Yeah, these are all these like, are all great games. At any point you're like, is that what your favorite game? I'm like, it could be. Could be easily. Yep. Yeah. Ask me tomorrow. Could be. In fact, some of them, as you're putting the list together, I'm like, oh, it's not my top ten. I guess this yeah. only only ten can fit there. Right. So anyhow, let's get started. Hey now, Dice Tower viewers, Jamie here from the Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast, and I'm so happy that they asked me to announce this number because it gave me an opportunity to show off all the weird math facts that are rattling around in my skull. Did you happen to know that 2 times 10 and 2 times 11 equal the same number? 2 times 10 equals 20, and 2 times 11 equals 22. This is, this is 20. <laughs> he clearly, he clearly <laughs> got that from Steve, that's right? A, that's, that's a Steve joke. That's a Steve if ever joke. There was one. Wow. wow! Jamie, looking good, man. You're looking good. Yes, it's great to see you looking so good. Yeah. So, all right, let's kick off the good games list. Finally, Finally. our number twenty is up one, so Feel it barely free. made it into the Feel good free, games. Feel free, folks, to just buy these outright, okay? Buy I don't these. care if it seems like a game that's not your style. Right. If you do buy them through Amazon, click the Amazon click link the, in the description click of the, this video. Uh, affiliate also, links. do all your Christmas shopping and every other piece of shopping through that link. Yes. Okay, right. anyway, sorry. All right, my number 20 is up one space, and it is uh, Wingspan, right? Done. What else ne needs to be said about Wingspan other than there are no it's worms? Dragons, it's it's just I... the old worm span. Well, there folks. were there are worms in Wingspan, right? Ooh. Aren't there on the die? Is that's one... true? Yeah, that's true. It was you there all along. The, the yes. blue was in front. They, they had an Easter egg in this years <laughs> ago. Do you think the dice for Wormspan will have birds? If they don't, oh, that would they're be missing something. Because the worms, yes. the dragons. Probably eat birds. Or eat birds. <gasps> so I know dragons eat humans. Sure. Wait, like, what? What else do they eat? They though? eat gold. Oh, goats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And goblins. Mm-hmm. That's and gonna be ghosts. weird. Like if they're gonna have food for them, I bet you it's gonna be super like. They've shown nice this stuff already. And yeah, not, they probably did. Yeah, none yeah. Of this darkness. Okay. Right. <laughs> Eat humans and also, what? the uh, Dragon Age uh, strategy is massively overpowered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Wingspan is a game that took the gaming world by storm, and I'm sorry, it's not going anywhere anytime soon, nor should it. It's a rock-solid design. It put Elizabeth Hargrave on the map, and she has certainly uh, <laughs> taken this and gone forward. She's done a, a number of other tremendous designs, but uh, Wingspan is a game that, that is all about the, that card play and trying to set up these cards to have nice combos and, and trying to make things work together, fit together nicely, and, and I still enjoy Wingspan. This one I didn't make the mistake of getting a bunch of stuff and getting the nesting box and feeling like I can never play it again. I've got the base game and maybe one, perhaps two of the expansions that give you extra birds. I'm and, biting my lips so hard right now. And, and they're, still in the, uh, they're still in the base box. Everything I've got is in the base box. So, um, Wingspan. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. My number 20 was my number six last year. Uh, it is from my favorite designer of all time. It is one of my Bruno favorite Farduti games again? of all time. <laughs> it is Bruno Catala. Mm. This is Five Tribes. It makes Yamatai look like garbage. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, that's not true. I always forget the uh, subtitle of Five Tribes because almost yeah. no one ever uses the it. Jins the of Jins of Nakala. Yeah. Be like whenever you say heat, you always say pedal to the metal. I just to mess around, mm -hmm. I guess. Five Tribes. I, I, I didn't know what it was, so I saw that picture. I forgot. Yeah, you don't need to say anything else. Five Tribes? I know what you're talking about. Right, exactly. Right. Five Tribes is a glorious Euro-style game with a Mancala mechanism, some set collection, a bunch of different ways to score, some bidding for positioning in the turn, lots of different things you can do. And then on top of that, the, the, the fun sort of French part of the design, which I love this stuff, is... Unique abilities with mm. these gins. You can hire these gins and they'll let you mess with the rules. I can. I, you're telling me I can't put a, a little oasis right here? Nuts to that. I'm putting an oasis right there because this gin lets me do that. That kind of stuff. Love it. Mm. My number 20, 
five tribes. Did Mike get his key lime empanadas? Not, Not yet. yet. The place isn't open yet. It opens Not. in an hour and 20 minutes. Mm. All right. Number 20 for me has been on the list for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. It is also a Stonemeyer game, but it is not Wingspan. Really? This oh, is I know what it is. The best Stonemeyer game of all is, times? Uh, for me, anyway. Everyone raise a glass. Cheers to Tom's number 20. Viticulture. Mm. Oh. I love Viticulture. I really do. And this is another game, multiple games on my list. Like, my first Radio Video Culture was a six. I remember that very much. <laughs> well, but, yeah, this has improved. He changed that one rule, that mm -hmm. El Grande worker, and that raised it to an 8.5. And then I played with the Tuscany expansion, and now it's a 10. You know, it's just, it's really good. I just like that you call it the El Grande worker. Oh, the El Grande. Did I say El Grande <laughs> <did>. worker? <laughs> Which is technically true, but you would be it's redundant. the El Grande <laughs> big worker. Yeah, the, the. The El Grande big worker. Mm -hmm. Laborer. <laughs> Yeah, for the people that don't know, it just basically that allows you to go to a space that's already been occupied, which mm -hmm. is huge. It really made all the difference. But yeah. I think that was neat, and that changed. I was like, yeah, I like mm -hmm. this. But that Tuscany expansion oh, is yeah. fire. Mm -hmm. um, but the Essential Edition, which is what the only edition at this point. That I think that's think. the only one that's like available now. Yes. yes, and if you can get it, that has everything you need to have a fantastic experience. And then if you want to do more, the Tuscany Essential Edition also is Correct. really good. Yes. Correct. Just yes. a fantastic worker placement. I, I love the whole sections, the seasons, mm -hmm. and it's another mechanism of surprise other people haven't copied. I've only seen it in maybe two or three games ever. Yeah, yeah that's, that's neat. I, right, yeah. Because you've got seasons in games like uh, Everdell, but it's not the same as here. Like this, you can only play these cards in this season and these cards in this season. And the worker placement, and the worker areas placement are like, is different. This is open. Yeah. We're moving on. Right. That's done. Now yeah, because you've here. done this. Yeah, because it makes sense thematically, right? You're planting and then cool. I mean, really, it's kind of like you have $30 to spend mm -hmm. and you're in the first store and you're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. we're going to two more stores. Right. Ah. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of that is a little like that, I guess, when it comes to the money is Power Grid is a little bit like that. And Power Grid, you're like, here's your money. Yeah. If you blow it buying resources, you won't have it to buy power plants. That's technically the other way around. Yeah. And then if you blow it during those things, you won't have it to build connections on the map. I agree. Yeah. Well, there mm -hmm. are games that do that with money, I think, but yeah. Sure. I like that mechanism, that angst. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of angst, the people's choice. Now, this is it is. The people's, this has been under people's choice for nine years. Okay. Last year it was 19. The year before that it was 19. The year before that it was 19. Whoa. But this year it's 20. 20. So, it's, <laughs> so it's falling off a cliff. That's Man. It. Yeah, it's done now. <laughs> this is a game that was in our category for worst box covers, but it's a great game. Concordia. Oh. There's another one of those Euro games that has embedded itself. It sure has, like man. Like Orleans and a few others. It's not going anywhere. It's in there. Yeah, Dug this, in like a tick. All right. Yeah, yeah. You, you, this is this is gertzed its way into uh, Mac popular Gertz. gaming culture. Gertzed its way? What? It, it's gertzed its way into popular gaming culture. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's, that's your number 20. Great game. Lots of maps. Lots of stuff for it. You Let's got gutsed. What? Hello, Dice Tower Nation. It is my honor and privilege to present to you the 19th selection in the top 100 games of all time. So without further ado, here is selection number 19. <laughs> I was waiting. I'm like, where's the like, shark? It's got to be a shark. Yeah, it's yeah, Pete yeah. Shirey, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. There will be a shark. Yeah, he's he just got they just came out this year with a new Jaws pinball machine and he bought it because he, well, of he, course. he, he, he oh, went in the dead, his kid's not going to college correct. any longer. Correct. But he has that pinball machine. I'll tell you what, modern pinball machines are unbelievably good these days. Oh, I know, they're great. They're so if you haven't played like a new pinball machine, they're like um, amazing. Now, here's the thing. Pete Shirey likes to flex on Jaws a lot, but he looks quite a bit younger. Mm -hmm. And I bet that he cannot say like I can, that he saw Jaws 3D in the theaters. Yes. That was about 90 minutes I'll never get back. So All when right. you saw that, did you dislike it on the spot? No, I was super stoked about going. I mean, it's Jaws in 3D. Yeah, right. I'm a teenager. Yes. I didn't think it was terrible then. I loved it. Yeah. I now I can look back and go, <laughs> I'm Michael Caine. I need you to explain how the shark was tracking them on land. 
That's what I, I'll never understand that part. Look, uh, the, the waves of the Great White are <laughs> cloudy and mysterious to us all. His tribe. <laughs> he saw in the theater, what were you, a year old? He's Pete? not that much younger than you. He's he, my age. He looks young. All right, he well. does not. He looks like an old, decrepit man. Jeez, right, well. good <laughs> lord. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, are we live? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Driving. Okay, that's not no. Okay. I love you, Pete. All right, so he is he is uh, of an advanced age. <laughs> he's barely better than what's up. Jeez, he's a mature individual. Okay, <laughs> my number nineteen is up three spots, and um, you know we talked about the, the 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 kind of the we had that one year where we had a bunch of worker placement slash deck building games uh, that came out. Mm -hmm. Really, they were a big three. And this is my favorite of the big three. I know it is certainly not your favorites. I'm trying to favorites. think what the, the big three is. You had Dune Imperium. And Arnak. And Arnak. What's the third? Endless Winter Paleo-Americans. You know what? I've already forgotten that game. Oh, that's a shock because uh, it's still fantastic. My number 19 is Endless Winter Paleo-Americans, which uh, a Stan Kordonsky design, he was... Uh, earlier uh, in, in the list, you know, uh, doing a number. And uh, this one, I love uh, a lot of things about it. I First of all, I love the theme, and I love the art by the Micho, of course. But I also like the fact that this is a game that has a little bit of a sprawling nature, but it's not too much to keep track of. So you've got uh, some... Deck building, light deck building. You've got a little bit of area majority, although it's not shown here with a little kind of a, uh, a board that you're going to be putting kind of tiles on. And you've got uh, tracks that you can see there. And you are gaining cards and you're doing, you're putting workers out. And the way that the worker placement works in this game, I think is really, really cool, where you place your worker at the top of a track, basically, and you go down and you do actions boom, 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 and if you're the first one to go to that spot, you get a bonus. Right. But other people can go to that spot later, they just don't get the bonus. Right. And that's really, really cool. Um, I Yeah, this game, just as soon as it came out, I was like, man, it was my number one of, what, of whatever year that was. It was and, last year, um, Mike. Was no, it last year? It was two years ago, no, right? No, no, not last year. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking. Sorry. Yeah, it was 2022. The, um, yeah, I keep thinking last year it was 2022. Yeah, yeah, it was two years ago, and so uh, it's up to 19 now. Like I said, it was like what 22 last year, but uh, really love endless. Now I don't want to spoil anything, Please, so yes. let me know if I'm if I might. But of that trilogy you mentioned, is this your is you've had Dune Pyram in your list? Yes. Have you had uh, uh, Arnak on your list? Arnak was always my third favorite of the list. Okay, three. so you do like this one the best? I do like this one the best, and I, and I do like Arnak. It's just not in my top 100. Yeah, I have them, not reversed, but it, it, for me, this is this is clear third. Mm -hmm. And then it's Arnak and Dude right now. I could see those two moving around, whatever. But yeah. Thank you, Bruno, and maybe I'll bring them to Brazil. We'll see if they're good. The what? He said, bring you guys to Brazil. Oh! oh okay. Uh, the uh, thing about this one is, I really like it. I like the theme and the setting a lot. The yeah. book is great. It always felt a little more disjointed to me than the other two. Yeah. The parts of it. Like mm -hmm. the, there's this game the happening here over with here. like tile laying and mm -hmm. stacking on top of stacking. Cool. There's this track over here that seems dis disjointed a little bit. The deck building thing is barely there. It feels a little disjointed from the other things. Yeah, I felt a little more, again, cold. Cold? Like disparate parts. I felt it. That kind of worked together, yeah. but it felt a little a little more, and I, don't, I mean this in the loveliest way, sure. a little more Frankenstein-y. Yeah, no, I... I the pieces I, together. I totally get that. Yeah, to me, I think of it more like mini-games. And, yeah. and, and you love that. I love that and stuff. And I don't right. necessarily like that. Right. It's just, yeah. yeah, a preference thing. I get that. I like this one too. So, um, mm -hmm. I I am surprised. This one you said big three. I don't think this one is going to reach the loftiness of the other two. Probably not. People. Probably it's not. It's one nineteen. Yeah, yeah. It was one twenty three the year before that. Yes, I still see it played at all of our. Good. Yeah. It is pretty good. I mean, almost. But the other like. They're very high. Yeah, they the other are. two are like sticking around yes. in a Concordia kind of way. Right. We're, we're going to talk about the other two. And the other two have today. had. Yeah, yeah, the other two have had. Well, I'm not going to even get into that. I'm not going to kick that hornet's nest. But anyway, um, yes, I, 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 it's it's still good, but you're right. It's not going to ever reach the heights of the other two. All right. 
Do it. Jason says today feels That's like endless winter, negative yep. 39 degrees. We are also, oh. it is like almost, I, I don't Actually, think it's, it's going to hit 80 today, guys. It, no, negative it's hotter today. Is it? 39 yeah. degrees? Where in the world is Carmen, Carmen San Diego? Diego. <laughs> so I don't know where she's at, but she's freezing. <laughs> okay, my number 19 was 16 last year. It's a game that's been on Tom's list already. It is one of the absolute best two-player games of all time. Mm. This is Targi. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Talking so about Riff Force, they'll be like, "Yes, I knew it." <laughs> no, no, I'm not a big fan of that. Targi <laughs> is a not just one of the best two-player games, but I think it's one of the best worker placement games. Full stop. Mm. I really do. It doesn't matter that it's for two. This is an excellent worker placement game in which you are selecting your spots that dry up as they do in most worker placement games. Mm -hmm. If you go there, I can't. But also, if you go somewhere, you also block you block that spot and the one directly across from it. I also cannot go to. And I am selecting these three locations and getting the places where they intersect, I also pick up that card. And it'll be resources or it'll be um, a card I can buy for those resources, and I, I'm collecting those cards. They give me scoring, they give me special abilities. It's such a good game. The, it is good. It's very sort of, if you're geometrically minded and you like that, and you're a worker placement fan, you, you, you gotta try it. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna enjoy that system. It's such a cool idea. It's something that hasn't really been done in any other worker placement games. I'm kind of I expected to see something like this in a Garfield game. Yeah. Because they make worker placements like they they're do. going out of style, right? They Every do. Other game, boom, 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 another worker placement game. But I really haven't seen anything quite like it, and I'm surprised by that. It's a robust system. Now, I haven't played Spirium, but is there any kind of a similar feel? Because you're going in between cards Spirium and stuff? Spirium does the same thing that, like, uh, Carpe Diem does. Oh, okay. You play... On the edge of two things, right, and you're getting and you skim forth, or you play on the edge of four things. Okay, you know, like other yeah. games have done that. Yeah. It's a little more common. Right, the worker placement intersection thing is, yeah. is not quite the same stuff. Cool. Anyway, love it. Great game, Targi. My nineteen. Thank you, Daniel, for the super chat. What's that super like chat? I, I need to see that super chat. I feel you, like I missed you were one. Giggling. Too. You were giggling at something. You were giggling at something. No, they yeah. said I saw that you giggling. He said. That uh, he had a dream about playing a game of me and Z. Then he uh -huh. woke up and realized it was a nightmare because Mike wasn't there. Oh. oh. Wait, and... what? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe there was only one super chat. Oh, no, there was one also from Bob. Bob. Thanks, Bob. All right. Okay, my number 19 <laughs> has been on and off my list in its various editions. Last year it was 78. The year before that was 101. So it's moved up considerably to 19. Wow. And I just realized how much I like this game. It's one of those ones that I don't play as much. And then when I, I get it out and play it, I just sorted it out a month ago. And I was like, I forgot it. This game's amazing. <sighs> Played Epic Style. And that is Thunderstone Quest. Oh, my goodness. You love you some Thunderstone. I really do, though. You do. And, I, and Thunderstone Quest, again, I always say this. Apparently, I say a lot of things. Someone said yesterday when I was talking about Marvel Champions that I said the exact same thing in a previous year and used Vision as my example that year, too. Wow. That's weird. Remind me next year to not talk about Vision. Okay, you got it. We, we're we're we not going to bring vision up Vision. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, no, no. Thank you, Indecision. Um, but, um, Thunderstone Quest, I, it takes the deck-building game where the, originally it was pretty much a, a, it was a copy of Dominion with mm -hmm. some changes, and now it's nothing like Dominion at all. Mm. It's a whole board game. You can go to different sections on that board. And you can go into the dungeon, and it feels like you're going through a dungeon. The fact that you can now keep cards in your hand rather than discarding them so that you can get the perfect hand of dungeon. I mean, you're giving up like half a turn to do that. Mm -hmm. But it lets you, if you have so, a guy and he needs a specific weapon, that's, it's not fun to play. And I have played deck building games where they have stuff like that. And you can't put the things together. It right. sucks. Right. Here you can be like, well, I know it's going to show up in the next two hands, so I'm just going to keep this guy in my hand until it happens. Yes. Yeah. And that just makes it more fun. This is one I feel like I'm going to play on the cruise. I'm just really jonesing to play it again. Really? Okay. So Thunderstone Quest is my number 19. Mm. All right. People's Choice 19 has been on the list for eight years. It was as high as number four. Mm. 
Um, and it is the people's favorite of the Lang trilogy, and that oh. is Blood, Blood Rage. Rage. Yep. yep. And it's only dropped one. It was 18 last year. It wow. is 19 this year. And I'm still kind of mind blown because we talked about this back this past year at Dice Tower East. I don't think it was checked out at all. Hmm. And then someone said, oh, we checked it out, and we went and looked, and there was like a mistake that it got checked out once, but still not as much as I thought. Mm. Oh, Pete says we can come play the pinball game? Yeah, it doesn't get there till March. Okay. Well, we'll think about it. Okay. Uh, you, or you bring it to us. Come to Dice Stories and bring that's the pinball. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, bring sure, sure. Machine. Bring the pinball. Have Pete, pinball. I apologize we'll for these two hooligans <laughs> expecting you to do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, People's Choice number 19, very popular game. Blood Rage, um, I mean, I remember when it first came out, it was so, I mean, it was just played everywhere. Yeah. Blood Rage, as far as the eye can see. Um, but yeah, I bet you, what, you want to put money down that Blood Rage will be played on the upcoming cruise? Yes, yes, it will be. It'll be mm-hmm. played multiple times. How do we know that? Because I'm going to play multiple times. Awesome. That's how betting works. Because there's another person that's <laughs> coming Sam's on. Because Sam's coming on the cruise. Right. Blood Rage. Oh. Blood Rage shall be played. Oh, snap. <laughs> All right, it's number 19. Hey, gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm so happy to be back on the Dice Tower for 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, anyway, I'm here to introduce number 18 on this top 100 list, and now I'm off to the 19th hole to enjoy the rest of the show. Nice. Did you know that Liz Davidson ha- has designed a game with David Thompson called Night Witches? About uh, female pilots, that's going to be uh, coming out. I did some not point know that. Soon. Mike, I did no. not know that. Thank you. It's very cool. I'm I'm excited for. Her. All right. My number eighteen is up nine spots, and it's a crossover on this very same list with Thomas J. Vassal. The that fourth. time you get Thunderstone Quest, the love it deserves. That's right. I've always loved Thunderstone Quest. My number nine, 18, <laughs> it's up nine spots, Viticulture, Essential Edition. Tom just talked about it. There's not much more that needs to be said uh, other than, yeah, I, I, I think if you uh, get the Essential Edition of Viticulture, the Essential Edition of Tuscany, you'll have everything you need. Um, that is two Stonemaier games in, in within three spots there. Yeah, yeah. Hang on to your butts. There's another one coming. Ooh, okay, see. from here on out, it's Stonemaier Actually, for I thought me. this might be your favorite Stonemaier game also. Well, it is my second favorite uh, Stonemaier <laughs> game, perhaps. Yeah, Viticulture's great. And um, we were mentioning uh, earlier that the wake-up track, I've always loved that wake-up track. It's the wake-up track. It's, it's really robust in Tuscany. It's been a while since I played base Viticulture. Yeah. It is in Viticulture, Oh, too. absolutely, It's just yeah. not as cool. Tuscany, there's all these rewards right. and stuff. Yeah, Tuscany definitely makes bumps that up. But but I had seen it first in Fresco. Mm-hmm. And so when I saw it here, I'm like, oh, that was one of my favorite parts of Fresco. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, really neat, really neat stuff. Love Viticulture. I still will happily play this. I haven't played this in ages. I've mm. played the app not that long ago, but in person. It's been a while. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right, my number 18, I feel like I'm repeating myself here. My uh, number 18 is one of the absolute best two-player games of all time. Mm. And the one part I will and not be better repeating. better than Targi. You are it's better than Targi two, by one. Two, you're a big two-player guy. You I think am. this is one of the best two-player games Wait, so of all time. you've already did Targi. Yes, I did. And, and you've already done lo- uh, he did the Seven Wonders, Wonders Duel. Duel. Yes, I did. And Raptor wouldn't make it this high up in your no. list. No, I wouldn't. It's not in my top 100. And you already did Jambo. Mr. Os- Jack. Asante, yeah. Mr. Jack is a good guess. Oh. But no, this is from another stellar designer. Not the good uh, uh, Bruno. That sounds weird. Like the the good one. Not Bruno Catala, but the good doctor instead. <gasps> this is a game that Tom adores. This is Blue Moon. Yes, baby! Okay. Blue Moon mm-hmm. is a fantastic card game. It is. Of... Pushing your luck. I need something stronger. Yeah, yeah, drink it, drink it. (laughs) Um, It is a sort of collectible card game-esque. It has that feeling a little bit. You have a a group of people, a a faction, if you would, and you are going to be playing against your opponent. It's a head-to-head game where you have your own deck. I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. This one is a pretty Euro-y version of that. And by that, I mean... 
It's very clean, no keyword soup, none of that stuff. It's also sort of a tennis match a little bit, in which I am going to throw something at you, and you need to lob that back to me, or you take a hit. I'm trying to hit you enough, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like the tricks that you can bring along. And again, the usual complaint, which Tom is thinking of right now, is like, this is no, like... No, I'm not. This is like war, because I say like, oh, five. And then in, in one of two elements, fire or earth, whatever, five and fire, and you go, well, six and fire. And I go, okay, seven or eight or nine or whatever total I throw back at you, and you need to lob it back to me. But on top of that, that's that's ignoring literally all the text on all the right, cards. Right. There's there's abilities that are going to mess with your opponent. Like yeah, six fire, and you cannot draw cards when you end your turn this turn. It's like oh yeah, do I retreat then? Yeah. Give up this fight before I'm really dug in, and let you take it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because you also have to know when to like fold, when to be like. Eh. I'm not going to get into a big fight that's going to cost me a lot of resources. You can have it. I'll start fresh, and I'm going to pin you against the wall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really like it. It's got a ton <coughs> of different factions. This was reprinted in a catch-all box called Blue Moon Legends, which was on my list last year. I, I, I chose that. But it's the same game. Blue Moon and Blue Moon Legends are the same game. One that came out in this format with just two factions, and one that Group them all in a single big sort of ticket to ride size box. Get whichever one. Yeah, I finally got because I used to have the, you know the Cosmos stuff. Yeah, and I and and I ended up getting rid of that, and I got Legends like a few months ago. Really? Because um, it's not in print anymore. It's, no, it's, no. Yeah, but I I would love to play this with you because because I barely get a chance to play it, um, and. Yeah, I'm Jones to play this. I might bring mm -hmm. some of this okay. on the cruise with me. It's okay. in the library. It's not a library. <laughs> oh, I need to. It cuts me deep. Shrek. I need to update a list we're going to be making here. Soon. We're, we're looking at uh, some buffering here, folks. I'm not sure what the deal oh, is. Oh, are we? Uh, some people are saying there's buffering. Oh, okay. Um, but I do want to. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, someone asked about Blue Moon, uh, Blue Moon versus Challengers. And I get that. There, there's some I haven't played Challengers. Comparison have between either. them, but Challengers doesn't take itself seriously. Blue Moon does. And I, I guess it so. does, yeah. Um, but maybe that's the difference for me. I don't know. Okay. Uh, my number 18 has been on the list for four years. In uh, 22, it was number four. Last mm. year was 12. So it's dropped a bit. Flash in a pan. <laughs> it's the <laughs> crew. Wow. Uh, actually, First? I don't know. I don't know what picture they put here. Uh, it, Okay, so this is the wrong picture. It's definitely the crew, Deep Space, but I did not give that differentiation to the people making this this list. So all right, it doesn't matter. Though. I'll play. It's not like if you bring out the crew, I'll go. I'm not. I only play the new one. I I'll play either. Okay. I just think the new the Deep Space the Deep Deep Space Nine yeah, no, you Deep C huh? is better. <laughs> and that's all, folks. <laughs> um, wow. No, I like I like Deeply the uh, the right deep now. sea one better. But <laughs> um, Quest for Planet Nine also good. Either crew, I really like this game. I'm I've been telling you guys re recently. I'm getting kind of mad on cooperative games. They're starting yeah. to fade for me. And in fact, there's only a couple of them still to come. Most of the games that are coming up are, are competitive. All right. But the crew is cooperative in such an intriguing way. I. I like trick-taking games a lot, more than I, I give Mike a lot of garbage about yeah. his trick-taking renaissance. I like trick-taking games a lot, but I'm looking for that game. When I play a trick-taking game, I want to play one where I sit there and go, you're going to play that card, and you're going to play that. I just I, There's something about that that really appeals mm. to me. Like, who's going to play what card when? Yeah. And, and when you, you can get into a really, if you play with three people who are good at trick-taking games, yeah. get into that zone. That's true. That four-player zone. It's so good. I don't know how to explain it. There's nothing else in gaming that gives me that feel. Yeah, you get the hive mind. It's like we're, we're locked in here. Right, and, yeah. and a good trick-taking game, we're all waiting for someone to play the aid of this, and then then we can play this. I don't. I like that. Mm -hmm. And the crew has that too. Even though it's cooperative, it still has that sense of, okay, 
I need to play this. So you can do that. And, and it can't be alpha gamed at all. No. Because you can't communicate. Right. Except other than that one communication, which is brilliant. I just really like this game. Yeah. A lot of fun for me, the crew. Good stuff. Number 18 for the people has been on the list for five years, and it keeps going up. 35, 29. Then the last few years was 24. Now it's 18. Wow. This is a crossover with Mike, and this is definitely a classic that is not going away anytime soon, and that is Root. Mm. Yes. So, wow, this is up high for the people. Nice. Yeah, I actually yeah. considered. I'm, I just put together my upcoming... Uh, Games I'm looking forward to in 2024. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Um, I had to make some cuts in that list. One of the games I cut was Ark. Right. But I'm looking forward to that because same designer, same thing, but in space, sort of. Mm -hmm. Very intrigued with that. But Root is such a it's such a phenomenal game because it takes a heavy war game, yep. brings it down into a, a, an era that you can understand. Um, I mean, a theme you can understand. Mm -hmm. It has four very distinct, very asymmetrical factions. And I know that there's even more. There's a lot more, but yeah, and, in the base box. And here's the thing. With all the more that they've added, I've heard nothing but good about all of them. They're all really good. Right? And that's yeah. amazing to me because yeah. I think doing four is hard enough. Yes. And they've, came up, they've come up with a really nice system of making sure that the characters you because there are so many characters, that you get a at least decent mix with what they call the reach system. Sure, that, yeah. and that's good. That sort of thing's helpful. And this is a tough game to understand. It it's is. not particularly heavy rules-wise. Nope. But I will say, if you want to learn this, and it's you have to pay money to get the app, but yeah. the app is phenomenal at teaching you the game. It is. It walks you through it step by step by step. And if I owned this game and I had a game group that I played with the same people all the time, I would think I, and I loved Root, I would buy them all the app mm. and say, yeah. use this to learn the game, now let's play. Yes. So, anyway, that's your number 18, Root. Hey, Dice Tower viewers, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and Dice Tower crew, take it away with the number 17 game of all time. Hey, Mike. You know, uh, Mike, it's right there in the, uh, it's right there, yeah. It's this very Mike, cooperative. Not Mike Kelly. I was going to say, it's right there in their name. It's a co he, he, he does a lot of cooperative and solo stuff. Yeah, and I, love luckily, their, I love their stuff. Yeah, they're great. Um, my number 17 is a cooperative game that is up 16 spots. Um, Marvel United. I love this system. Yes. I love the system. And... Yes. Has this come out with a boatload of expansions probably too soon? Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe I'm being hypocritical about that, but um, I don't have them all, first of all. But it, to me, this is about the system, right? This is about the, the core system, which when we first played it, we're like, is there enough game here? You know what I mean? Absolutely. 100%. We were like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I like it, but is there enough here? And then you see how versatile this game system is. And how far you can take it without adding many rules. Yeah. It is the cleanest system where you've got so many different things involved, right? Yeah. They, they have not had to make significant changes to the core rules of the game, right? And, and they've been able to add all kinds of stuff on there. It's very impressive that the... I'm always impressed by a game that has like that frame, those bones yeah. are super clean. Right. And they can go very light, they can go heavy, they can yep. go tricky, they can go difficult or easy. That's so impressive. And, and it's me. so easy to scale the difficulty yeah. with it, and player count doesn't, you know, it's great across the player counts. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just really, really impressed. Uh, you, know, you keep waiting for something to come along and go, oh man, this didn't quite work. This, they, they kind of broke it here. Not yet. Right. You know what I mean? It's still it's still just super smooth. Love me some Marvel United and I'm not even a huge Marvel fan, right? right? I'll be much more stoked if they do come out with a DC United just because I like that theme better, but it's the core of the game that I like. <clears throat> yup, yup. My number 17 was 24 last year, though I know it's been higher than this. It kind of it, it oscillates in that top 20 or so. It's um the it's one of the best regarded cooperative games out there. Mm. Uh, it's also one of the most complex ones. This is Arkham Horror, the card game, the oh. living card game from FSG. This wasn't your top ten at one point. This has definitely been in my top ten. Yeah, like I said, it's been 
as low as 24. Probably last year was the lowest, and it crawled back up a little bit. It lives somewhere in the, about the top 25. Um, and at any given moment, if I bring it out and play a couple scenarios, I'm like, this is my favorite game. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Or top three, or whatever. And then I put it down, and it drops a little bit, because it is a, a hard one to pick up. Yeah. And that... I feel affected me, especially this year, a little more than it has in previous years putting together my list. Because it's a, a serious consideration, this mm. feeling of, I love this game. Do you want to play? I do not. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know I, mean? I don't want to have to learn it. I don't want to have to sort of get my feet muddy again trying just to put pieces together. Now, I'll happily do that and then play it a few times and sort of, again, like I said, dig in. But... Uh, it's a little tricky. Having said that, my goodness, what a fantastic game that manages to do so much with so little. Another one of my favorite things in gaming. You know, this is this blows away all of the Arkham Horror, the board game editions, in my opinion, with theme, and yet it's a card game. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, you get to be so much more of a character in this one. Because you have a, a big deck of cards that lets you have weapons, have spells, unique abilities, things that only you can do, that no other character can do. It's amazing. The amount of theme here is through the roof. Uh, it's tense. It's fun. It's a well-told tale. I really enjoy this one. Um, solo, great game. Two-player, probably better. That, both of those player counts are fantastic mm. for me. So my 17, Arkham Horror. The card game. Hey, you like playing as solo, but it seems to me like, and maybe I'm wrong here, you enjoy playing as the in sharing the experience with somebody else. Yeah, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially because it is complex, so there's that sort of shared lift. Yeah, you can share the the brain load. Share the load, bit. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two players, and yeah, three even is what the last time I played a big campaign was uh, with uh, Chris and Camilla, and that was really good too. Mm. My preferred player count is two. All right. Well, you all know I don't like, I mean, this is said all the time, I don't like heavy Euro games. You hate You do Euro not, no. As far as I them. know, you despise mm -hmm. them. And yet yes. this one sneaks on the list anyhow. Wow. It was 58 last year. Whoa. It debuted at 58, and now it's up to 17. And this is from a smaller company, but I love the people who run this company, Federation. Whoa. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, this is your this is your game that you kind of championed. Well, you know what, though? Ain't is, nobody talking about this It one. is. Well, I think it's going to happen because it's it's coming to America from uh, Eagle Griffin. Remember oh, they picked it up and I, come out? I thought that happened already. Well, maybe okay. it did, but yeah, yeah. I definitely have seen more people playing it recently. Okay. Uh, it did not make the people's choice thing. I don't know that it made it anywhere. I'll, I can look it up later, but it did mm. not make their top 100. This one was almost too much for me, man. This made my brain oh. hurt. Really? You know what, though? I think the game is smaller than it looks. Yeah. Because all it's those things tracks. are just really cool tracks. Yeah, yeah, they're all but tracks. But, man... The worker placement is so fun in this game because when you place a worker, first of all, you can decide which side of the worker you're going to place. That's smart. I like what? that. Yeah. And How know, many sides do the workers have? Two, but don't give people ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Placing cubes and you choose which side. But one 100%. side is basically like an auction, Write right? Write that down, please. It's like, isn't that like an auction that you're bidding or something? Yeah, well, yeah. one side is more like... It's going to matter like for an area control yeah, type thing. Yeah. And the other side can give you resources. So you have to decide. But then where you place it matters. There's different actions. that you're Mostly you're moving up tracks. There's technology. Um, really cool end game bonuses that you can pull off. Like there's an extra worker that one person can get. That's a really cool one. But you'd have to like work towards getting that. It is. It also I love the bright colorness of it. I like the whole Galactic Senate type thing. Very enjoyable game. Um, it's about a two-hour game, I think. Mm -hmm. Just solid, great game. All right. All right. Got to try it. People's Choice number 17 has been on the list, well, since 2012. This one is only 17. Last year it was nine. But this might be a mathematical thing on my part, and I don't, I'm not apologizing for it because I don't have time to figure out the details. But I think the votes may have been split between this game and its brand-new spanking deluxe edition. Okay. Castles of Burgundy? That is correct. Okay. Vote for the OG, folks, because mm -hmm. it makes it easier for me. All I should right. probably put that next year when we do the voting. Yeah. I'll have to put a thing that says, vote for the original game, otherwise it might 
not the original, make the list. The, the, the new one is you talking about that crazy plastic? Yeah, thing? The, yeah, uh, like, the Awakened I, Realms. When oh, I was yeah. going through the votes, I saw a lot of people voting for that, but it's almost impossible to figure out how to differentiate those yeah. votes. Yeah. So this mm. could be possibly higher. Right. So Dave all Bergen the numbers are Bergen invalid, Bergen. is what I'm understanding. That's I'm correct, saying. yes. Bergen. But the it's still, list 17 is still pretty high. This is a very, very, very popular game. Um, like I said, they made this humongous deluxe edition, which has been getting mostly positive reviews. Yeah. Um, it's one of the few deluxes that I did add to the library. Oh, you like, did? It's in there? It is. I'm adding Ooh. very few deluxe editions to the library these days of the of the big box variety because mm -hmm. we only have so much space. Everdell right. didn't make it. Mm -hmm. Castle Panic didn't make it, you know. The yeah, and it's funny because the, the, the deluxe Burgundy reminds me a little bit of Foundations of Rome in that sure. it's a huge production for a relatively small game. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I have not even seen it, I think. Uh, I might have to try this. Yeah, so there you go. Your number 16, Castles of Burgundy. I like it. Welcome to number 16. If you did that, Mike, if you did that, the internet would break. It would break the internet. Can you imagine a quartet of mics? Seriously, We'd yeah. We'd have to shut down the dice tower because we would never be able to go higher. Right. Yeah, and that's why I'm keeping that in my back pocket. I've got something like that already made and ready Thank to go. Thank you, Meg. It's not exactly like that, but it's, you know. What? I got a little something going on where I, there's going to be four of me at one time on the internet, and I just I want to wait until the bandwidth can handle it, because <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for shutting down the internet across right. the universe. At Oslo, they'll across go, the universe, they're gonna at Oslo they'll go into emergency <laughs> that's, that's mode. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Defcon. Uh, Defcon one or whatever it is. Yeah, they got my, Defcon in Oslo. Yeah. <laughs> my number I'm embarrassed. 16. I'm embarrassed right now. <laughs> Look. Oslo is in Iceland. I'm going to be in Iceland soon. I'm going to, it's in Sweden. Well, I yeah, yeah, no. All right. million, Can I try dollars. to guess Mike 16? Don't do Can it, you? Mike. It's a trap. Well, I, he I showed know. it. He <laughs> showed it. Don't it accidentally was up already. All right. Uh, New to my guys, list guys, uh, is Zuvatis from, from uh, <laughs> Reiner Knizia. Look, this game is this a... This is brand new to your list this year, right? Yes. You've never... Quo Vadis, you never played before? I never played Quo Vadis. Okay, okay. Um, this is a pure negotiation game, and th this game blew me away. Um, it blows me away that you like it this much. Oh, my gosh. It's fantastic. Where's Cosmic Encounter on your list? Well, I enjoyed the, the one time I played Cosmic Encounter, but I enjoyed it, I think, because I had it under the best possible circumstance. You know what I mean? Um, That's super nice of you to say. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, and Zuvatis is... It, it brings some, a part of me out that no other game does, and it won't happen every time, but I get, like, cutthroat and bloodthirsty in this game. And if I sense a weakness, if I sense a Joey Evans, You're gonna I'm going to exploit <laughs> that weakness. Um, yeah. uh, we, Oslo is, is in Norway. Yes, I know. Yes. I, it, I, was, I was joking, like, doubling down on being wrong. Um so Zuvatis is a pure negotiation game where you are um, a uh, an animal, a type of animal, and you're all trying to get to the showpiece place in the zoo, right? Okay, right. And thematic. It is, and every uh, animal has a very good special power. However, you can't use that special power. Right. It's a negotiating tool to let other people use it. She's pretty clever. It's I like that idea. It's super clever. Um, and that was added in this version. That wasn't in Quo Vadis. Another thing that was added that wasn't in Quo Vadis are these neutral peacocks that you can move around. And it's brilliant. It's another thing you can use as a negotiation tool. And it's the type of game that is very, very cutthroat in that there's a limited number of spots in that star uh, exhibit. And if you don't get one of yours in there, no matter how many points you've gotten through the game, you can't win. You're completely out of the mix if you can't get at least one of your pieces in the star exhibit. We're going to have to play this live sometimes just to show you all the uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde situation. I, wanna, I absolutely want to be in that. I haven't played this yet. Yeah, it's... And, and, and I have never played a negotiation game that really worked for me all that much. Um, this one. This one works for me. It is so good. And, and look... 
I'm not going to say that the production that Bitewing Ding on, did on this did not play into it because it did. It is a gorgeous production. So, um, number 16, Zuvatis. Quick shout out to Nick from Bitewing Games. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I have not met many game publishers who love games as much as he yes, does. Yes, he sure that does. That is, a, I, I wish. A lot of publishers, and I get it, you're right. busy doing stuff, but he loves games. He does. He does how to play videos for games from other publishers. He also, and I'm sorry to be a little bit heretical here, yeah. he loves Dr. Canizia more than you do. Uh huh. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Nick, is, uh, Nick is close. He's close. I'm but, just saying, um, I, I haven't seen, I don't know. Well, look, Nick has a personal relationship with him, and so, yes, of course, he's... Well, so do you. Based in far away I have a parasocial. I got pictures to prove otherwise. Right. I've got yeah, a, I've like got a delusional, not real relationship yeah. with Dr. Kinesia, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's not quite as good as Nick's actual human being relationship with Reiner Kinesia. So mm -hmm. you just need to be friends with Nick. I think I am. I think I am friends with Nick. I'd like to think so. Wow. That's the way you are with Kinesia. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, as, save as, us. Yeah. Do your 16. Jeez. All right, number 16. Uh, is a cooperative game as well, and a love, lovely one, and a simple one, which is, again, mm. partly why it's this high up on my list. It does something a little bit different than a lot of cooperative games. It has um, a mastermind element to it. This is Rising 5. Wow, this is still up so high. Yeah, baby, Man. the runes of Astros, okay? Woo. The Gins of Astros. Was that on your top 100 at one point? It was, and it's still just hovering around the outside. I mean, it, it could easily find its way back up at any given point. This was my number 17 last year, so it's right there. It went up one. Yeah, um, I love this game. It is one of the fastest cooperative games out there as well. You play with an app, and that app is running a... It, it comes up with a mastermind puzzle, basically, and runs it for you. You take actions, moving these characters around, fighting dudes, collecting energy. Once you've got enough of this energy, you can then scan the board, this little puzzle you put together, to see how close you are to the, the mastermind puzzle. And it tells you, okay, these two are right, but they're in the wrong place. This one's right and in the right place, and this one's not in it at all. You're like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Then you so you fight again some more. You build up your energy again until you have enough to move some things and take another picture and try to win that way. Or you lose by having the moon crash onto the planet or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. Love it a lot. I love a couple of things. I love that there's a cast of characters yep. and you can move any one of them. You are not any one of these people. You control them all. No, I'm always the one... That one big giant dude. Except for Tom, he's the one big giant right, dude. Right, right, right. But normally, when you play the game by the rules, <laughs> you can play cards to manipulate any one of them. That's I also the other thing which game. I alluded to is that the game is so fast, and I know it's fast because you play with an app that tracks how long you've been playing, mm -hmm. and this game is consistently thirty to thirty-five minutes. That is good. It's fast. It is fast. Yes. I really, really like this one. It's got a couple of little Can variants. You keep talking about this deluxe version. There's a deluxe yeah, version? There's right? a deluxe yeah, version. Yeah, that's yes. the one that with if the you minis. you don't have the deluxe version, you don't have it's this a, game. It, it was big box before big box was cool. It's a, it's a big yellow box. It's long, and it has minis, and it has alternate play modes, like mm -hmm. little expansions and stuff. Yeah. I don't have this. We need to get that. Why do we need to get this? This game's not that good. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I like Rising 5 fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dump out all the pieces and put them in the regular box. I'm pretty sure it would fit. Of the deluxe, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's a, It's got a big insert know. and stuff. Yeah, I think it would fit. Um, really, really like this stuff. It's number 16, Rising 5. My number 16 has been on the list since the game came out in 2008. So long time. Last year was 33, but it's moved up to 16. I played this actually several times this year. This is one of my favorite games to teach new people. We already talked about it. It was on the People's Choice already. How this game, I used to get on its case about iconography, but no longer because modern games oh, are worse. Okay. And this is Race for the Galaxy. I love this game. And you know, I've been playing a lot of Race for the Galaxy lately. Yeah. Um, without... The expansions, there's a lot of expansions. Yes. I've been playing just base, and I'm fine with just base. Yeah. I really am. I don't mind adding the expansions in. I won't add it in the third one, but you know. Actually, yeah. actually, I have in, I think, the library copy, 
I believe I have the first three expansions included, except I took out all the war stuff. I just took it out. Who cares? I know. That's what I did for a long time. This is one game that I have a very... It absolutely suffered from that whole... It never comes out because I have expansions in it now. Yeah. I just ended up getting rid of it, actually. Yeah, but no it's really it, easy but... to play without... I mean, and I just play without that stuff. Yeah. And it's fun to teach people, and I have a great time with this game. It, it really has held up well that using cards for multiple stuff, I just yeah. think it's phenomenal. Yeah. I know you like another game better, which is probably on your list coming up. Um, I don't know if it is. No... Oh, it's falling off, huh? Yeah, I don't think it's on here. You mean San Juan? You mean San Juan. Oh. San Juan's not on here, Tom. I like San Juan a little bit better. Um, I go back and forth on them a little bit. I, I really do think, for me, again, the expansions in the long term hurt this one for me. Yeah. I just kind of like didn't feel like bringing it out anymore. And I might agree with you, but I'm saying I'm subtracting those expansions. I should have done that. And it's making it better for me, that, actually. Yeah. Um, now, there is Roll for the Galaxy, which I like a lot, but didn't make my top 100. I used to like them about the same, but the speed at which I can play Race for the That's Galaxy the just wins. It's just cards, man. And it's then there's the board game version, mm, which is called New forget, Frontiers. New Frontiers, which just had an expansion I announced. Know. I didn't know anyone would play New Frontiers, so well, go figure. Well, I think if it was priced differently, more people might play it. But yeah, that is true. That is true. But Race for the Galaxy, I still remember the very first time I bought it at Toys R Us in Korea. Wow, cool. Um, and read the instructions on the way home and was getting just like excited reading them. I'm like, you can do multiple. This is so cool. Mm. I was so excited. Yeah, and then I played with Lara, my wife, and she was like, I don't really like it. I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah, that's okay. I still have the game. And Laura, in case I didn't. Jeez. <laughs> oh, 16. Uh, oh let's move on gosh. here. The People's Choice 16 was also 16 last year. It's been on the list for five years. It is not number one. It is number 16 on the correct listings. This is Brass Birmingham. Oh. oh it is not number it. one. Because you know what doesn't happen on Dice Tower? We don't have a bunch of people coming in and rating the game. They don't <laughs> like a, num a bunch of ones. You bunch of losers who did that. That is annoying. No, I'm sorry. On BGG. If, if you go, on BGG. Oh, it was the, a Gloomhaven the, thing. The Gloomhaven versus Brass Birmingham, and people from both sides came in and rated the other one a one so that theirs would rise. I'm sorry. If you do that's that, just that's sad. Mm -hmm. that's and, so I, and I'm not apologizing for that. That's a sad thing to do. Yeah. That's pretty lame. Yeah. It's yeah. so ridiculous. But Brass Birmingham, I don't love the game. But I completely understand why people do. It's very popular. It is. It's been years since I've played Brass. I've never played the, the Birmingham. I played the original Brass. Is this the one I played with you? Or the other one? No, you played this. Okay. You hated it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate it, but I, I, I also do not. I don't love it. Uh, Chris loves it, so don't. It's not, the Dice Star is not down on it. And no. it's in our library. We have two copies. It's one of the few games. And I deluxified it because I know people like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know someone in the comments just said Lancashire is better, but definitely people like Lancashire doesn't even come close. You know what's funny with these mega firm. deluxe editions of classic Euros? This to me is that done right. Yeah, it's, it's not still in a reasonable much. box, but I, I think that a big part of the reason why this game has had this rebirth, I won't use the other word, um, is the Roxley production. I mean, yes, it's, I agree. you know, it, it it gives this game a gravitas, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, Roxley is fine. They really can nail productions, I'll tell you that. True. Well, there you go. You're number 16, Brass Birmingham. Number 15. That's improperly <laughs> creeped out. You're not getting the game back unless what, you follow these instructions. What was the what was the head? I don't know. I was too creeped out. I also can barely see it behind the camera, but was it some sort of... I uh, played again, Roy. Right? Also, was he, in a, was he in a robe, too? Uh, there's yeah, a lot to unpack out. Don't play it again. I'm yeah, so play it again. I'm there's a lot disturbed. to unpack. Okay. Bear? Oh, it's a black bear. Number fifteen. <laughs> he he is from Canada. Maybe maybe. Head. You think what? it's a bear? It's a bear. 
I think it might be a bear. In a robe. <laughs> well, that looks like the kind of robes you wear. Well. It's a bear or a rat, possibly a rat also. It could be. Okay, yeah, no, there's just too much. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there. There's, there's too much. The world board gaming. He's going to wear it there. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Firebeast is like, I didn't want to sleep tonight anyway. Yeah, that's right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that one's going in a dream journal, I'm sure. Yeah, that was David Lynch, yes. Yes. All right, now, my number 15 is new to the list, but this is probably in my top five of most played games over the last two or three years. Um, I teach this literally at least once at every convention. Um, it's soon going to be oh, know what uh, is, yeah, you know, okay. available to many more people. This game, I think, is just a banger. This is Vicious Comic Fishes. Hunters. Oh. Yeah, this. so this is the first time it's showing up on my list, one? but I've been playing it for... A couple of years uh -huh. now, you know, because we got the Bra the Brazilian edition, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. I I, I got it through a, a lovely a Brazilian friend. And May I interrupt you real briefly? I'm gonna let you talk about this. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> this is a real like. I'm gonna let you finish. Moment. Yeah. No, I just want to say this before people run out and go berserk trying to find this. Yes. I can almost 100% guarantee <laughs> you a U.S. printing of this will be announced in this year. Do not try to hunt this version down right. at the cost of mega bucks. Just hold right. on, be patient. And if you're afraid, a few more if you're afraid that there's going to be significant differences, don't be afraid. Well, I'm not. Okay, go back to your. Thing. We don't know, but <laughs> yes. All right, back just, to you. We're just saying. Go ahead, Taylor. <laughs> what? Come on. Right. I'm blinking in uh, in the Morse. I just made a big announcement with my eyes. Oh, did you? I usually do. That was the announcement. Look at my gorgeous eyes. Can you eyes. talk about My number one? 15 is Comic Hunters. This is a great game. If you like card drafting, this, uh -huh. is, what I've sometimes said is that as modern art is to four different types of auctions, Comic Hunters is to four different types of drafting. It's a re oh. So if you like card drafting, there's four different ways you're going to do it here. And if you like the idea of collections especially if you're a comic book fan, but even if you're not and you just like the idea of getting collections, this game is so satisfying, so good. The premise is, is that these are actual Marvel comic books throughout the ages, okay. and uh, the, the cards are the cover of these classic Marvel comics, actual covers, and you are drafting cards, and it has a nice system where the cards are not only what you place in front of you for points, but they are also currency to play the cards out. Chris says this was 20 in your list last year. Oh. That, up five, apparently. I have it new, but yeah, no, okay, whatever. Good. I'm actually glad it was because I'm like, how was this not on my list before? Uh, just a mistake. Uh, so, Comic Hunters, love, 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 love this. And, um, yeah, I, I, this is one I, I haven't gotten tired of playing, and I've played it a bunch. All right. I also, before I forget, I forgot to say thank you to GJ and Neil for their shout-outs. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, my number 14? No, that's coming up. My number 15 is now... You can do 14 if you want. It's a weird no, I'm going to do 15 first. Then right. I'll do 14 after that. Uh, this was 26 last year. Uh, it is a two-player only game. I love me some two-player games. You sure do. One of the best two-player games of all time. Is wow. it that one uh, that's is this a reprint? Your... Is it a reprint? It's a reprint, sure. Is this your top two-player game, or is there another one higher, potentially? There's more. Wow. This is the one where you are not spies or like spies. No, this isn't Caper. That's going to be higher. Oh, that was my guess. All right, I'm done. It's a very large two-player game. Star Wars Rebellion. Lord of the Rings. It's bigger than that. Like box size. Oh, it's claustrophobia. Claustrophobia, baby! 15 mm. someplace, uh, 1643. Yeah, in the year 1643... Straight up demons is going to be rising up from caverns deep within the earth. Mm. And we are going to have to send some bad dudes in there to wreck shop. He's a bad man, my gemma. One of you two players will be the bad dudes. The other one, a straight up 
troglodyte dealing <laughs> big demon sp spawning fool clashing fighting playing different scenarios in which you mm. attempt to do whatever it is you're trying to do normally if you're the demon side just take these fools out if you're the dudes escape or find some place and bomb it or i don't know something so you're it's a awesome. demon or you're a dude you're both bad they're both kind of they're, they're both kind of like yeah because the the human side is a redeemer normally mm -hmm. just like a, a like a paladin type character okay but then being reinforced by prisoners that they are like springing from jail mm. to and throwing them into these caverns to help basically save the town you know what mm, I mean okay um, this is a very thematic game very cool setting but also very mechanically interesting and again usually games that get me in this style big epic you know uh, lots of minis kind of stuff they have a cool setting sure but they're also not um sprawling mechanically they are yeah. sort of they, they know when to pull back they know how to give you something that i can look at and go hmm this these mechanisms interest and excite me from that point of view from the mechanisms point of view not just Okay, I'll put up with some sort of sloppy American-style mechanisms for the sake of um, demons and big hammer, and you know. I want both. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Claustrophobia 1643. I love it. It's a, it's a great two-player game with two very asymmetric sides. Well-balanced, super fun, and pretty short sessions, like an hour, hour and a half maybe each session. So, hmm. All right. Go. Dudes, uh, demons and dudes. <laughs> I'm the first person to do my top 100. Ever. Ever. No, Ever. In, the, in the group here. I always do mine first. I just love doing it. Mm -hmm. And I put together. And the last one I put together mm -hmm. is the people's choice. Mm -hmm. So they have no bearing on each other. But, shockingly, we both have the exact same 15. And it's also new to both of our lists. And for both of us, it's the last new addition to both lists. And that is the very popular... Even though everyone says it's bad already. Earth. Wow, okay. Oh, Earth is so Earth is last month. My 15 mm -hmm. and the People's Choice 15. Wow. Um, you are the People's Voice. Yeah, I just Woo. worked out that way. I really, I just played Earth. So I took a pile of games to Joey's Meetup on Saturday. Some new, you know, garbagey games or whatever. When I played, and I was going to, I went to a table to teach someone, someone I knew from Dice Tower East. I was like, I'm going to teach them. One of these new crappy games, and he was punching at Earth, and I thought, or, <laughs> or we could play Earth. Right. So I taught it, I taught my wife, I taught another couple the game, and I'm every time I play this game, the thing I like about Earth is there's these four actions. Yep. And you, and unlike other games, where they like pick the different action each turn, which works. Mm -hmm. An upcoming game from Mike will be talking about that. You know, you have to pick a different action. This one you can pick the same action, and I love the fact that every time I play this, I pick one of those actions. I'm like, this will become. My super action. Right. Whatever this it is. Will be my super action day. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, be. so like this time I, w I tried to make the, a giant pile of compost. <laughs> I, I, I picked something and right. I had like 80 cards in compost. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. I came in fourth place. But, <laughs> but it was fun. But you had a but great it was pile fun. Of yep. yeah. It was really fun just trying to figure out switching the cards here, doing mm -hmm. this. There's a lot of things. And I get. People's complaints that there's not a ton of player interaction. There really isn't, other mm -hmm. than me saying, "What action did you pick? Got it." Right. Or you beat me to getting that animal first. Mm -hmm. Whatever it might be, or the occasional you played a card and like, "Man, I wish I had drawn that card." Right, right, right. I don't care. Mm -hmm. It is so much fun. Yep. This game just and it plays so quickly. Yes, it does. I'm never. I mean, I play pretty fast in games and get a little more bored than I probably should, waiting for other people to take their turns. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's finally, on me. Finally, you admit this. That's mm -hmm. true. We've no, been I trying know. to get you to admit this for years, years, literal years. This is growth. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. But in Earth, I never have this problem. At most, I might take my actions and go, oh, you're still doing something. Ten seconds went by, and we're back in the next yeah. turn already. It's it's like that. It's really fun. And you're doing something on other people's turns, too. So, so yep. this is my uh, the highest new entry to both of our lists. Woo. Um, but that's number 15 for us, Earth. Number 14. Okay. Wow. Okay. Oh, Harmonizing. Harmonizing. Okay. Okay. We gotta get the start word started. Um, but, yeah, we, we, we can't do that. Why can't we do that? We could do that. 
Yeah. But you have to practice. I wouldn't know what note you're starting on. I Number gotcha. 14. Me a, me a, I'll go bass. Give me a D, uh, give me a D minor. Number 14. <laughs> now give, me a, give me an E sharp. Number 14. <laughs> it's, it's uncanny how good you are. Look. It's amazing. I've got a natural ear. Yeah, two of them, actually. Well, they were implanted, but they're, they look <laughs> oh, natural. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, these gotcha. Are, these are uh, 3D printed facsimiles of an ear. Now, speaking of that, I wonder what people do. You have the hearing aids, right? And the hearing aids are getting better now. They're more hearing. Yeah, they are, yeah. But what if you're like, we're growing up with pods now, the AirPods. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, oh, can you use... Do you think they'll make a, a combo pod hearing aid? Hmm, that's a very interesting. I think what it would probably be, already exists, and I don't know about I it. I think what would be more likely would just be ha having Wi-Fi or or Bluetooth inner inner you know inner put in an, uh, a hearing aid so that you can just play your music to your hearing aid. Yeah, we're gonna get like twenty comments of people saying that already exists. I'm you say, let me know. You'll get if there that first. doesn't exist, I want to patent it right now. I've said it on the air. <laughs> that's gotta it's be, mine. Yeah, that's gotta I be a thing. Know. I we're, assume that's a thing. I don't know. Hmm. Right, anyway, back to your number 14. I, I have no idea either. Facsimile was Mike's toilet paper word of the day. <laughs> I've, yeah, no, I've, I used accoutrement already. So. You did. All you right, did. my number 14 it. was also 14 last year. It is a um, cooperative game yes. called Unsettled. This oh, crap. game is so unique. It has some of the best writing I've ever seen in a board game coming from Orange Nebula Games. And the idea is that each time you play, you're going to be picking a particular planet. And that planet is going to have some type of danger, something. It might be a planet with poisonous spores. It might be a hostile desert planet with wind storms that come through. Okay. And what you're doing is, as a team, you are trying to go through a series of missions. So it's like the first task you have to have is to do this. And so you try to accomplish that. And if you accomplish that, now here's the next thing you have to do. And all throughout it is this incredibly funny, but actually naturally funny and not forced writing that really pulls you in. And if as a group you are willing to get into that and kind of play into the theme, it is such a rich experience. Um, it, it, it came with, I believe... <laughs> Sorry. Someone said the cover looks like a tissue box at 100% is correct. It is. I don't love the cover at all, but the cover is just really for this core system. Yeah, the but art you know in the game is great. I think it doesn't get played a lot from the Dice Tower Library. Yes. And I don't think it's because it's a bad game. No. I think it's because that cover doesn't say the name on it. it yeah, it well, it barely does. But yeah, you're right. It, it the box cover is not really compelling, and also I've been on the side. I think yeah, it's compelling. Yeah. It just yeah. not doesn't say board game. Right. Like, and, you know what I mean? It yeah. looks to me, it looks like a stereo system or something. I, I agree. I mean. it, no, and the box shape looks like a stereo bo si yeah, system yeah, too. Yeah. And also, quite honestly, this is not a game to pick up and learn from the rule book at a convention. Right. It, it's got a, it's got a fairly steep. Mike, he got you. He just said, "Pull it out of the library," I believe. Oh, that's what Mike just said. Okay. If yeah, I mean, that's not my choice. That's not my decision Dude, to make. No, I, it's your. You are an advisor. I will mm. take your advice. I'll be honest with you, I don't know that this is a great library game. But anyway. Bam, I um, sec second. Yeah. <laughs> because it's so modular oh, and, and it's hard to kind of, you know, it's got a learning curve. But once you get it, I have taught it at conventions, but I don't particularly like teaching it at conventions. Um, yeah, there's some games like this game. Yeah. They're, they're hard to get into. They, mm -hmm. And again, people who are into this are into it at home. Yes. But somebody was just like, oh, yeah, I've been playing it. I've been playing through, the, through nine planets mm -hmm. at home in yes. sort of that scenario. You are excited that about the setting. new planets. I am. I haven't broken into any of the new what planets What are the terrains yet. of the new planets? Oh, gosh, I have, I have One to One of them look. is made of farts. That's correct. It's just a planet of full of farts. Fart I have to say, if there was a fart planet... I would 100% play it with you. I'm sure you would. I'd be yeah. so excited about that. Well, we can pretend Every time to take an action between picking up the worker and placing it, you have to hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the gadget planet. Get it. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I've said enough. It's a terrific game. Um, unsettled. My, whatever my number is. It's 14. 14. Was 11 last year. Also cooperative. Whoa. There's a lot of co-op games there up here. Is. Mm -hmm. This is Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition. 
Um, one of my favorite cooperative games. Also, technically, one of my favorite worker placement games. Hmm. Though in this game, the, the worker placement tension really isn't the same as no. what makes worker placement games kind sure. of worker placement games. But it is how it works. It's really more of a push your luck system. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. You are, everybody will discuss, figure out kind of what you want to achieve on that turn, what resources you want to mine, if you want to go to the libraries and get special ability cards, if you want to transmutate, is that a word, Mike? Sure. Uh, one metal into another. Mm hmm. And so you select where you want to do these things. Everybody can sort of, you know, change their mind up until you're done. But then you see what catastrophes hit the uh, the island of Atlantis. And you have to play this little chicken game in which if you go closer to the coast, your return, your reward will be greater. You can draw more library cards, gain a better return on whatever you're getting. But you're also risking that wave coming in and washing your workers away, and you'll mm. get nothing. Or you can take a safer spot closer to the inside of the island. That's the main game. The less juicy, yeah. Yeah, and so you have to kind of, you know, then you can mitigate those things. You can, you have special abilities that say, well, uh, if the wave does come in, I still get to activate one of my people there. You know, whatever. I really like this very modular. Um, Incredible granularity when it comes to the difficulty setting. This is one of those games that if you want to take the time and find the exact right difficulty for you and your group, you can do that. Mm -hmm. I haven't played any cooperative game that lets you tweak as many little things to make it just right for you. Game's pretty easy too. This is one of those co-op games you can win. Mm -hmm. I teach this one at conventions a decent amount, too, and it's normally a win. Yeah. Give the win to that over Unsettled. That's it? That's Unsettled's it. hard. Unsettled oh, is yes. pretty hard, yeah. Unsettled is tough. Um, gorgeous, fun game to play. Um, nice sort of techy undertones to it, too, because mm -hmm. what you're building is like this portal to teleport everybody, so it has that kind of like a sci-fi theme to yeah. it also. Yeah, I really like it. Just um, don't ever pick the orator character. I mean... The odor? No, the orator. Oh, the orator, yeah, yes. Don't ever uh, pick that character he's because he's overrated. It's not very good. Um, <laughs> it's a promotional character, and though he is particularly handsome, <laughs> I've been told, he's not very good at his job. He gets distracted. You need a hearing aid. If you've been, huh? <laughs> if you've been told that. Uh -uh. <laughs> My number 14 debuted in the year 2017 at the number one position. Whoa. And still very high for me. Um, and this is Gloomhaven. Gloom. Haven. Now, why am I. Why am I and, and, and you can include in here for me, I'm including Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, and Frosthaven. Okay. As one. It's, it's a, a system. Gloomhaven system. It's a system, yeah. So I have Gloomhaven actually at. Wait, which one do I have at my house? It's either Gloomhaven or Frosthaven. I might have both there anyway. And I played through. I played through a good chunk of both of them. Gloomhaven, I'll never play again, probably because of the the online Steam version yeah. of it is so good. Mm. And Frosthaven, I'm almost like dragging my heels. Like, do I want to wait till that comes out on the mm -hmm. digital one? I, because it just handles a lot of the upkeep for you. But this yeah. is a brilliant system. It's really. It's kind of a weird. I, I don't know how to describe this to people because what it did is it. It took um, role playing, but it took the role playing out almost completely. There's a little bit where you go yeah, through cards and really things like that, yeah. and and there's a lot of story. And I don't want to dilute what Isaac did. And there's a lot of story, and it's a a gorgeous world with brand new races and all sorts of things. It's not a carbon copy fantasy. When we always talk about generic fantasy, this ain't it at right, all. Absolutely. And Frosthaven even more so, like because it's this cold, it's a settlement in the cold, yes. and that you trudged there and got there. Mm. Now you're building this up. I like that a lot. But what I mean is, it's not also either kick the door down either. This is a strategic board game that has the role playing universe around it's it. Like, yeah, it's got the board gaming tropes, which I don't mean that in a pejorative way. You know, the things you're familiar with, but the gameplay is very Euroy. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of games have been trying to do this. Like, hey, you've this. 
hand of cards. It's mm -hmm. your life, but it's also your actions, and you put two together, and yes. everything plays. I mean, we talk about asymmetrical games. Gloomhaven might be the most, even more than Root, I Maybe think, sometimes. So. Maybe so. You play one character, jumping to another character is so different. And how they keep coming up with new ones is beyond me. There's a really cool fan-made expansion, which was sold, I forget yeah. the name of it off the top of my head, that because he allowed it, it was right. licensed underneath it, that added as much content as the game. Yeah, it's and incredible. that many characters. That's crazy to me. So I, 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 I'm, I've not played it as much yeah. because, you know, well, I played a lot of Frosthaven, I guess, in, since our last one. But I think this is a phenomenal system, and I like it a lot. So 14 Gloomhaven. Mm. People's Choice, 14. Now, I said there was no new entries on the list, but this is close, as close to because last year was 86. Wow. Wow, okay. It debuted at 86, and it was barely out. I'm, so I'm not, I was not surprised to see this in 14. So let's see if you guys can guess it. It's a newer game. Okay. came out not last year, the year before. And it just blew into the top because it's this popular. It's a game that at the last conventions we have, it's always been in constant play. It's in the hot games room, always pulled off the shelf. Thunder too. Road? No, that's too new. You're, you're, yeah, yeah. It's a year beyond that. But you're thinking in the right direction. Um, oh. With theme. It is, oh, really? Ish, sort of. It's, is, it's not, is it Dark Tower? No, 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 not, no, not. With theme, he said with okay, theme. Okay, with theme. So, post-apocalyptic. Yeah, he. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. I know it's kind of weird with Thunder oh, Road. There's two theme, ways to do the theme. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay, cars, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Setting, I don't know. Well, Got setting it. is, I don't know, whatever. Okay, he. you're wrong, Colonel <laughs> Sanders. <laughs> he. I, I am not surprised at this. This is really... Oh, me neither. Everyone, we put this out and it just got played and played and played and played. I think this could be top 10 next year. Yeah. It might be. Mm -hmm. It is that popular. We'll see. I don't know. Well, it's got a new expansion coming. and I want to see that crossover, the Heat, Thunder Road, and <laughs> yes. crossover, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me take these cars and put them in there. Correct. Or, or put in here some oil slicks That's and some... Right. Walls for them to crash into. I, I want love it. some carnage. I love it. Well, anyway, that is your number 14, and not a surprise me at all. Yeah. Happy New Year from your friends at Alderac Entertainment Group. And now the Boba Fett of this list, the 13th favorite game. Not the hero of the story, but it steals the show every time it hits the gaming table. I like that. Yeah, very nice. All right, very Let's nice. See. This is, the is one this that an AEG steals. game? It is not. It is that not. would be pretty. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. All right, my number thirteen is up twenty three spots. Wow, it's a it's a relatively new game. Uh, I believe uh, twenty twenty two. Um, mm -hmm. It is a primarily a card game from. Le Botteju, which apparently I've been pronouncing as uh, the juice box in French, but it should be the game box. This is Tribes of the Wind. I oh, adore wow. this game. I, I adore love this game. This game. So this wow. is a, uh, as I said, essentially a card game where you are playing cards based upon the types of cards that you and your neighbors have, the people around the table, actually, not just your neighbors, um, because you can see the backs of their cards, and it's all based on colors. And so you may play a red card that is going to have a particular power if there are two other green cards out there, but it'll have a better power if there's four or more, something along those lines. So you are not only thinking about and considering what cards you have, but you are oftentimes going to be choosing cards based upon what the other players around the table have in their uh, you know, little card holders. And you're doing that to essentially uh, kind of build up this city in the treetops because it's like a post-apocalyptic type of thing. And so you're removing pollution to build out these little... Uh, it's crazy how you are... Pulling theme out of this game, but yes, I am pulling out some theme in there. Um, it's so abstract. <laughs> it's it's yeah. I mean, it's no more abstract than a, you know than most card games. I I, I agree. I mean, but no, I'm I not do arguing love, that. Yeah, you're yeah. talking in a very thematic way. Right, right. Because you know, first of all, the the art by Vincent Dutre helps you know to Can't to build that. to build that world. And uh, yeah, this is just a lovely game. I I I really 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 have 
continued to play it and continued to be like, man, this is so good, this is so good. There's a slight little bit of asymmetric stuff going on, but not a whole lot. Uh, I like the tile laying element of it. I love the card play element. I love the amount of time it takes to play. Mm -hmm. um, man, yeah, this, this game just blew up for me. We're pretty far apart on this one. Yeah, I, oh, I know, I know. I don't think this game is as popular with a lot of people, honestly. This one just works the really well The thing is, well I like me. the main mechanism of this game. Yep. I just don't feel like there's a lot of... I can't plan for it. I like the idea of using the cards in other yeah. people's hands. It just feels a little random. It's very tactical. It's tactical, react right? but again, I love tactical games. Me too. Yeah, yeah. And I don't love this nearly as much as Mike does, but mm -hmm. it doesn't doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. whole, like, okay, well, not a good time to play this card. Okay. Right. And don't play it right now. Yeah. Um, all right. My number 13 was 18 last year. Another card game, uh, something I consider to be a minimalistic card game. And in my opinion, Tom Lehman's best design ever. This is Rise Arcana. Oof. I think Rise Arcana is not his most popular design. I would be for, that guy like the A. But <laughs> for me, I think it's his best design. I think it manages to do everything that he is particularly good at. And that is put a whole lot of interesting choices in a tight condensed package. In this game, you draft a deck of cards. The whole thing only has like eight cards. And you have a character that you begin with. That character has abilities, your eight cards have unique abilities, and from just that and a few other things you purchase, location tiles, special unique artifacts, what have you, from a few moving parts, you get this tremendously combo-y, feed this engine from this point of view and churn something and spit out this and use that to acquire this in a race, a, a clawing to get to 10 points. And that, from that point of view, it very much reminds me of Dune Imperium. This feeling of every point you earn, you sort of have to, you know, again, just really dig for. Uh, this gives me that same feeling. If you play with the expansion, or the second expansion, then there's a new resource in there that is worth victory points in and of itself, these pearls, and the goalpost was moved to 13 points. So it's about the same length, but you, you make a few more points. I really like that expansion as well. But even just the base game is tremendous. I so, so like this game. I'm not a big fan of fantasy like this. This is pretty generic dragon fantasy, I guess. But I don't care. The game is so compelling. My number 13, Rez Arcana. All right, my number 13... Has been on my list since 2014. Last year it was 10. Basically the same spot. This is my favorite. No, one of my favorite. Whoops. Rosenberg's. Oh. Um, slip. And this is Caverna. Had a chance oh, to play okay. this. Interesting. Had a chance to play this this year again. And just, man, I love this game. I really like the flow of it. I like the feel of it. I really enjoy even the feeding your people part of it, which I don't necessarily love. But in this game, there's so many different ways to do it. You did a favorite designers list recently. Do you remember where Uwe was on your list? Number two. Or three. I don't. Or four. But I, I don't remember he even made the list. And what? I, I don't You've know. You've got so many Uwe games in your yeah, in top you're 100. On Actually, I think I only have three. I don't care. They are really? big enough to account for like 12. No, I minutes. agree. I was—I okay. don't know. I was looking at the person's body of work. I don't remember. I remember yeah, yeah. I was saying if they came out with a new game, how excited. I wasn't saying that as a got you. I was really curious. I didn't know. I really do. I mean, yeah, anytime yeah. he comes out with a game, I'm certainly interested in it yeah, for sure. Yeah. Did you play um, his uh, the Bat Guano one? Yeah, oh, that one Tiwa. was fine. Yeah. I, I just felt like I saw the whole game. Mm. Uh, I have not played his one he co-designed with somebody this year that Chris, that was super dense. Oh, uh, the no Nova, uh, 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 the, not Nova, but the, yeah, Plantanuba. Plantanuba, yeah, I haven't played that one. But I do like Caverna. Mm -hmm. To me, when I heard they were making another Agricola, I was excited because I liked Agricola, and when I played Caverna, I was like, I'm never playing Agricola again, and I haven't, actually. Oh, well, I played Family Agricola. But Caverna, I just love the plentifulness of it, love being king of the cows, 
You can do, you know, whatever you want to do in this game, you can do that, and it's just a lot of fun. King of the robed rat people, you can do it. Caverna. Although, I will say this. It's come out with two expansions. I thought the first expansion was fine, but I would barely play with it because what it does is a, you are a specific race, like the goblins or whatever, and it kind of says, play this way. And you're mm. like, well, I guess I have to, which I thought was kind of a right. weird way to play Caverna. And the second expansion is terrible. Terrible. Wow. The one that came out last year. You haven't heard anyone talk about it. Wow. Oh, the 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 uh, hang the Hengist expansion. Yeah, yeah whatever. No, I'm joking. Right. Remember that game? That's a yeah, terrible yeah, yeah, game. It was yeah. like Hengist. All right. Yeah. The People's Choice number 13 debuted in 2016 at 12. So it's been pretty consistent. Um, it was 17 last year, and it is consistently ranked higher than its older brother, which is 35 this year. So... That was Seven Wonders, and this is Seven Wonders Duel. Mm, yeah, this yeah. just consistent. I mean, very rarely, I, I think until Seven Wonders Duel, I don't remember a two-player duel version of a game right. being more popular than the original game. I don't, I don't think that's so. ever happened just before. It's a spin-off, even. It's crazy. It's a spin-off. Yeah. Before this one, again. Like, it right. didn't happen with Catan. No, no, it didn't happen no. with Starship Catan either. Nope. I'm, I liked it, but again... The only other time I can think of this happening recently is, and I really think people I think people will agree with me on this, was Splendor Duel, yeah, right. I think is really stinking good. Easily you can make an argument that it's better than, than Splendor. Sure, it's but from that came the same out. designer. And there's great, there's great stories behind both of those, right? Like this one was designed on an airplane... Bruno and Antoine sitting next to each other on an airplane, oh, figuring out how do we do drafting for two players. Like it was af at the, after a convention, they were flying back to France mm -hmm. and they came up with this. And then Splendor Duel, they had come to Bruno specifically saying, "Hey, can you make a two-player version?" He's like, "I got nothing." <laughs> He's like, "I can't. I, I got nothing." And then he was designed a different game. I can't remember the one that I think it was the um, Sobek, probably. Sobek yeah, one, yeah, yeah. and, and that gave him the idea for Splendor. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. I should have so put that clever. on my predictions list that another two-player popular duel. game would be mm. announced and or released from Earth, Katana. Earth Duel, calling it right now, done, boom. <laughs> Earth Duel, baby. All right, so that is your number 13, Seven Wonders Duel. Hey, Marty Sonny. You know, your co-host from Rolling Dice and Taking Names. Yeah, the board gaming podcast for 12 years. Anyway, what number did Tom give you? In the 80s? Man, obviously Tom likes me best because I got number 12. <laughs> no lies there. Mm. No lies there. Uh, in the 80s. <laughs> wow. I That's, love it. That's also, like... that means that Marty got back to me faster also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. My number 12 is down uh, six places, but again, love it. This is maybe the what I think might be the most interactive Euro that I like. It can be mean. Uh, this is Outlive. This is a game this set in a... It is also Le Botteju, isn't it? It is also Le Botteju. Oh, and Piero said your pronunciation was great, by the Whoa! way. Whoa! All right. Okay. Good. Why, why are you feeding the shark? I'm, ha I'm helping Mike Delicio feel better about himself. He's got uh, very little going for him. That's correct. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, quadrilingual. And, uh, quadrilingual? I speak yeah. English. He has four tongues is what that means. English. English. And American. And American. English, American English. All right, Outlive, set in a post-apocalyptic uh, universe, but essentially think f uh, Fallout Shelter. There really is a Fallout Shelter of the board game, but this is just like the video game, right? right? Where you are having to go out and scavenge for resources in a post-apocalyptic world filled with danger, uh, and the other players will exert their influence on you and steal stuff from you if they can. Uh, but you're all doing that in service of creating the best shelter for people that are coming down uh, in there. You have to give them accommodations, these rooms that will give you abilities. You have to feed all the people that are down there. You have to have enough water to deal with the radiation that's going to be coming through. Um, just a really, really fun uh, but very interactive Euro game. This one does not got that much love. Uh, no, at all. I like it not though. It's yeah. a neat game. I need yep. to play this again because I played it maybe once or twice, and I don't remember it that well. To be I, honest. Yeah. Well, I remember playing. I know you enjoyed it when we played it. Yeah, Didn't I? yeah. 
It's good. I was happy back then. Well, those were the days. <laughs> this was before the apocalypse. <gasps> yes. Why is my number 12? If this is true, someone's saying there's a new definitive edition released, low price with the expansion included. What? That would be fantastic. Out. Because the expansion is really good, too. Not the underwater uh, the expansion. Definitive. Wow. Edition. Yeah, I knew this was getting. I knew this was getting reprinted. Um, expansion. Because it's been out of print off and on, you know. So wow. Back. Do you think about? Well, I'm waiting for Z to get the twelve. Yeah. Baby. Um, do you think that, and if there was an apocalypse, if you found an apocalypse that gave you throw it away and disgust? Like, yes. Ah! Right. I don't. Yeah. It's like I don't want. Too be, true. It's, yeah. It's too soon. Too soon. <laughs> All right, Z, what you too got? Too soon, game. Okay, my number 12 uh, was my number 8 last year. It is a two-player game. Wow, shocking. <laughs> I'm giving they, up. I'm just going to keep saying, up, I'm gonna keep saying mm -hmm. Caper and Mr. Jack. No, because that's going to be in the top 10, I believe. It's Caper Europe. Oh, it fell out of the in top 10. You hate this game. I used to <laughs> like it a lot. Wow. I was like, this game's great. Um... And then I saw the error of my ways. Mm. No, this game is great. I love, love, love this game. It was my eight. It's my twelve. Same thing. <laughs> it's 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 you essentially know, it's, it's way up yeah, there. Yeah. It is such a fun. We were just talking about <gasps> Seven Wonders Duel. We hit two thousand viewers. That's exciting. Yes. That's Hello. what happens when I bring up Caper Europe, baby. Hello. Wait, you said Hello. Caper, and we jumped up by a hundred viewers. Wow, poor yeah. Ross. His okay. wife is endangered. Um, Thank you, sir. <laughs> what um, happened when you were talking? <laughs> yeah, I'll live. You were like, huh, a box of juice? What? <laughs> Caper. <laughs> there it goes up again by another hundred. It's there not. <laughs> so go to the Kickstarter page imagine? and start talking right, right there. Imagine, yeah. um, no, Caper Europe is a great tug of war style game for two players. It feels a little bit like uh, Seven Wonders Duel. There's drafting in this, it's just not on the table. It's traditional drafting. This idea of I have a hand, I pick one of these uh, ne'er-do-well people, and I give you the others, and we flip them. We assign them to a location. We give them equipment, these guys. You are trying to break into these locations, and the game comes with different, different decks of places, and, you know, steal paintings and steal gems and, you know, what have you. It's a very tongue-in-cheek kind of theme. The equipment that you assign to these people is also very tongue-in-cheek, like the, you know, the hook on the gun that psh, you climb up a building, silly things like that. Uh, but the whole thing is so well-balanced, so fun to en engage in this little sort of tug-of-war. And that's partly because this is like the third version of right, this, right, you know right. what I mean? So they've balanced this thing to perfection, you know, and not mm -hmm. like... Oh, it's so balanced that it's not fun. Mm -hmm. I just mean it's really engaging to get do that little push and pull. Yeah. This originally the original Spanish release, uh, which was called "It's Mine," was already a very fun game. I really liked it, but then they came out with Caper, which re-implemented that. Really liked that, and Caper Europe re-implemented that and reworked it again, simplified it, made it easier to play and teach. I love this game. If you have not given this a look, and I, I feel like some people have indeed overlooked it, but you like two-player games, you, you gotta try this. You know, Seven Wonders Duel gets all this love. Mm. Many of these other games get all this love. Uh, Splendor. But this one is up, it, it's it's in that class. It's in that weight class. Give it mm -hmm. a go. That's my 12. Caper Shame Europe. about the production, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> it is stellar. Yeah, it's a good production. All right, my number 12 debuted last year at 32 and is now up to 12. I love this game. It's about time. This is mm -hmm. great. It's a crossover with the people, and it is my favorite of this particular series, too, and that's Clank Catacombs. Mm. I really love Clank. I just played um, this. I told you that, right? Like a couple of weeks ago. It's yeah, really good. I just love the exploration part of this so yeah. much. I, It really... It just added, you know, when I first heard about it, I was like, ah, I don't know, we'll see, playing it. But the idea of just, I'm going to go down this path, you draw a tile, and you could rotate it a bit, mm -hmm. but still you're like, well, that's not what I want it. And when you're done, as it grows, the dungeon just looks really cool. It's really neat. They added a few small minor things, but it plays pretty much like regular Clank. 
but with the fact that I think every game feels very different now. Because mm. I actually, the original Clank board, I know pretty well. Yeah, that's, that is I an know, issue. I know, okay, you're going to go yeah. here, there's an ice cave at the beginning there, you go here, whatever. It's yeah. You get used to it, and it's still fun, right. but this really brought it up a notch for me. Yeah. This completely replaces Clank, and it gave me a little bit more complexity, not a ton, and I think I like it better than Space, too. Because Space had that whole, and I like Clank in Space, but it had, you need to go here, and then do this, and then come here. Clank kind of comes just a little bit more open, yeah. and, and less rules-heavy. And I think the, the 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 fantasy theme with the silliness of it works better in a fantasy setting. It's not me. as silly, too. Actually, mm. that was that was. I liked Clank in Space. I liked that game system more than I liked Clank. Interesting. But I, I did didn't not. like the humor in it mm. as much as I liked the setting. I guess I should say in Clank. I thought it was too goofy. Well, I really like that. You know them. what I mean? Clank in Space was like, the jokes were really like, they, <laughs> get yeah, it? It's, they were pretty. It's an alien, or it's a Terminator. It's like, mm -hmm. I get oh, it. Oh, that's true. This was I didn't more... like that humor. Right. Oh, did you see our promo card for this? I'm super yes, pumped about it. The Patience fun. card? Yeah. yeah. That's so much fun. Very, very cool. cool. All right, that's my number 12. People's Choice number 12 is a crossover with me. This uh, has been on their list for seven years. It debuted at 47, went as high as four, and is now 12. It was 10 last year. Gloomhaven. Oh, there we go. Again, okay. very, very popular game. Obviously, the biggest Kickstarter of all time was Frosthaven. And Gloomhaven had multiple Kickstarters and, you know, just doing very well. Very fine. To the point where a new dungeon crawl comes out these days and people go, is it like Gloomhaven? Yeah, that's, yes. that's pretty much the you know, people, measuring stick it now. Is, it, yeah, it is easily the most defining game in this genre. Yeah. So, that's your number 12. Every year, the team makes their top 10 greatest moments of the year. But they're always remembered a caveat. If you aren't on the list, don't worry. You were number 11. It's official. I'm number 11. 11. Not top 10. Oh, no. 11. Rude. Rude. Here is number 11. The number everybody cares about. <laughs> That's very true. Luke is my number 11th uh, British person named Luke. Oh, my word. Wow. Uh, hmm. You're going to roll that one back when you think about it more. <laughs> um, definitely, uh, we want to say uh, Luke does um, helps out in Discord. Yes. And everything, so. Luke does a lot of great stuff. I love that guy. Luke's a good dude. All right, let's close out this list with... Uh, oh, number 11, just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, with a game that's down a, a little bit, but, I mean, again, this is uh, Raiders of the North Sea, okay? And, and this is a game that has a really nice little twist to worker placement where you place a worker at a spot, you do that thing, you pull a worker from a different spot, you do that thing. And the workers can be upgraded to, to allow you to go to different spots and you are essentially doing this game in, in almost in two halves. I mean, it, your timing may be a little bit different, but in the first part of the game, you're really concentrating on that bottom part of the board where you're building your crew, you're gathering your resources, and you're preparing to go to that top part of the board and do raids, right? And so that's where you're going to be doing your raids. You're going to be utilizing those uh, cards at the bottom, which are your crew, and you're going to be trying to beat the, the strength value of those different areas and you're going to get cool stuff for doing it. And if you add in the expansions, it becomes a much richer it's no it's no longer a uh, an entry level worker placement game it's now one that's definitely more in the medium weight um, and it allows you to kind of send your fallen crew to uh, to Valhalla and get stuff that way too so I really do still love Raiders of the North Sea it has a fantastic app if you want to just try the base game out yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, a great app, and uh, yeah, still uh, still way up there uh, for for me in the Garfield games and in all games. Raiders of the North Sea. My number eleven is new to the list this year. It's a brand new game from this past year. Whoa, eleven, uh, eleven. I heard that one ring off the wall. You hit the, you hit the, the, the. I can't take it. 
I have no. A I, note, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he did. Yeah. Um, my number eleven is a card game that does a lot of things I like in card games. This is ancient knowledge. Ancient knowledge. Wow. Whoa. Why were you not in the playthrough of this again? I don't know. Um, Whoa. We played this without you. Yeah, you did. And then I heard about it from you guys. Whoa. Like, oh, you might like this. Zio. I think you'll well, like it. And here's I was, the thing. We were underselling it to you because yeah, I thought you would love this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know. Um, but I really do enjoy it. I love, 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 love this kind of thing. The begin with a blank slate, mm -hmm. buy cards with powers, and forge your own path thing. Besides that, you also, of course, have the cool mechanical thing of the passage of time, the cards moving over on your tableau and falling off the edge. Yeah. So there's a very organic way, thematic way even, in which your combos that you've created break down. And I love that. Yeah. I love that idea of... Because in, in an engine building game, once you've built the engine, if the, you don't, if the designer doesn't nail the timing of yes, the game, exactly, yeah. you could end up with an engine you couldn't quite put together, mm -hmm. or an engine you put together five turns ago, and now every time it's your turn, you just go... You just run the engine, yeah. 12 points. 13 points. Whatever. Yeah. This one, the engine decays in a very natural way. It's like part of the game. It doesn't feel like, oh, they're trying to make me... Make new engines. Huh, I see through that. No, no, no it like super makes sense in this. So I really, really like it. It's yeah. fantastic. It's been a while since I played it. I wonder if I'd played it more recently if it snuck would have snuck onto the hundred, because it's right there. I mean, really? this is a really good game. Yeah, it's so it's so my type of thing. Yeah, it is. My eleven. Ancient knowledge. All right, my number eleven. Man, this one uh, Luke ain't wrong about the 11, though, because yes. I'm like, ah, I just missed the top I 10. Know, it was actually six last year. It just got bumped out for whatever yep. reason. Uh, but I still love this game, and if you're at a convention and you're looking for a game to play, this is almost always the first one I'll pull out, and that is Nid of a Lear. Yeah. I just love this. I really do. And this is, again, just like I mentioned with Caverna, has two expansions, and I find them both to be eh. fine. Yeah. I love the base game of this. Me too. The expansion does add... The first expansion is better than the second, and it's nice to have more stuff, but the base game of this, I'm never tired of it. Every yeah. time I pick a color, like this is the color I'm going to get a lot of. What leaders am I going to try to get this time? I'll try something different. I just I just really enjoy it. I love the coin upgrading system. Yeah, just a lot of fun. It's a good one. So yeah, Nice. My number 11, Knit of Lear. Right. And the People's Choice number 11, this is the third year this has been on the list. It was 72 when it debuted. Then jumped up to 15, wow. and now 11. Very popular game. Wow. This is um, constantly being played. I, I don't love it nearly as much as people do. I think it's fine. You guys like it more than I do. I think it was in your top 100. It is uh, the most popular game from this trio of designers. Um, they have their own company. They work with AEG. Uh, what is the name of the company oh, now? Cascadia? Yes, Cascadia. Oh, Flat Out Games. Flat out well, games, okay. yes. This yes. is their most popular game, mm -hmm. yes. for sure. And yeah, Cascadia. It's so beloved. Wow. It really it is. is. It's. I know it's doing really well for them. It really kind of took me by surprise at how popular it is, but there's no question. Yeah. This is it's so probably the most popular game to come out in the hobby market in the last couple of years. It's I would so imagine. approachable. Yeah. And and it's so smart the way they made it. Uh, the the. The difficulty, right? The d choosing yeah. which animals you pick. No, is... this game is again exactly the kind of game that you would see at Target, yep. at a Barnes and Noble, right? It's that. It yes. nails that. It does. Yeah. It's this incredibly approachable and won't bore most gamers. Yeah. Won't overwhelm non-gamers. Right. Exactly. Yep. Well, there you go, folks. Good stuff that is. 23 up, we have 10 That's more it. amazing games to talk about. That's it. Whoa, okay, whoa, whoa. I'm done. Oof. That's the last one you get from me. Unless we fund on our oh. Kickstarter by the time I'm about to hit that number one. Or Tom, I guess, because um, you're after people. us. The people. <laughs> like, you want to find out what the people's I'm number about one to game number is? One, he's like, well, I'm not telling you the rest of mine. That's right. Yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're done. We're sitting here and waiting. All righty, folks. Well, thank you all for watching. Check out our Kickstarter, DiceTowerKickstarter.com. We'll see you in a couple hours. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Zeke Garcia. And uh, see, you, see you soon. Yes. Bye.